In this Photoshop tutorial, we're going to talk about the new Select and Mask feature in Photoshop. We're going to talk about adjustment layers, smart objects, digitally repainting images. We're going to talk about highlights and cinematic rich lighting and so, so much more. Let's get it started. Hey everybody, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by touchvid.com. I'm so happy to have you here. We're going to have so much fun today. You're absolutely going to love it. We're going to create this cinematic image composite today in Photoshop. And the cool thing about this tutorial is you can check out, there's a link down in the description to this video. Click through, go to the blog post for this tutorial and download the PSD. Well, not only will you get the finished PSD that we create here today, but you will also get both of the raw files. They're both images that I shot. They're both images that I can share with you. So you can get the background and the subject. They're free raw images that you can download and follow along in this tutorial. So make sure you click on that link, check them out. Uh, beyond that, I always am trying to sell a course on my website. I've got one on image retouching. You're absolutely going to love it. If you like this tutorial, you're really going to love the stuff in the course. Uh, click on the link that appeared in the video. Check it out. If you pick up a copy, it just really helps support tupvid.com. Helps me keep creating these tutorials. Helps me put out more tutorials. Helps us get a better studio space. You know, all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and get into this video. Now here, of course, is our uh, finished image. We're going to just walk through how to create this. There's really nothing else to say. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump over to my finder. And I have a couple uh, DNG files. So you've got this Eden Studio Raw, and you've got Philadelphia Shipping Yards. Those are both of our beginning .dng images. Now, these DNG images do kind of have some settings applied to them already. So uh, let's go ahead and bring the Philadelphia Shipping Yards image into Photoshop. I'm just going to drop it here on Photoshop. It's going to open up in the Camera Raw Editor. That's wonderful. Um, and it has some settings applied to it already. The DNG can kind of carry those files, uh, excuse me, carry these metadata settings with it. So you're going to have these settings as well. Um, and I kind of made it purposely that way because it just makes it easier. We don't have to fiddle with these settings. You can, however, go through and just check to see what all I did and, and everything and, you know, have some fun with it. Maybe tweak your own image the way you like it. You can really do whatever you want. Uh, but this is what I'm going to roll with here for this image. So I'm going to open this just as an image, not as a smart object. So I'm just going to hit open image. And after we've opened the image, the first thing I know that I want to do is widen this thing a little bit. So I'm going to unlock the background layer just by double clicking on it and hitting OK. What we're going to do is we're going to go Image Canvas Size, and we're going to push the canvas out to the left over here. So I'm going to set move my anchor point over here to this like middle right point, and I'm going to reset the width to 7,000 pixels wide. So that's going to push out an additional whatever, 1,200, 1,300 pixels, whatever. Uh, well, 1,400 pixels, I'm sorry, to the, to the left there. See, so that just pushed it right out. Great. Now what we can do is duplicate this background layer command or Control-J and flip this image. So I'm going to hit Command or Control-T and right-click and choose Flip Horizontal. I'm going to drag this right over here, kind of something like that. There we go. That looks pretty good. Commit that change, and we're just going to mask this edge away. So you can see we have quite a bit of image overlap. That's great. We're going to go Layer. Layer mask, re uh, reveal all, excuse me. And I'm going to grab my brush tool. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a very soft edge brush and a pretty large brush, something like three, four, oh, even bigger. This is a huge image. Uh, maybe, well, a thou thousand is too big. Let's go like 875, maybe something like that. That's pretty good. Hardness set to zero. We're painting with a color black. We're just going to come in here and paint, paint, paint this together. It is probably fairly important, I should point out, that you probably want all of your bokeh to be pretty sharp. So any areas where you have this kind of thing happening or some of it's blurred out, just go in and make sure you just absolutely solidly get rid of any entire pieces of bokeh and make sure you reveal uh, make sure you reveal any pieces that you want revealed sort of in whole. All right, see that? That makes it just a little bit more, you know, a little bit more uniform. Maybe I'll get rid of that so it doesn't look quite so, uh, so, so much like a copy. There we go. Cool. So we brought our backgrounds together. It's not perfect up here in the sky. You could play around, spend additional time on it. Same thing down here in this corner. Um, you can see the image is kind of fragmenting a little bit. It was shot fairly late at night uh, with an older camera as well. Uh, so we've got our background. What I'm going to do, I could just merge these two layers together, select the top layer, hold down Shift, select the bottom layer, hit Command or Control E. Let's size this entire image down. So we're going to go Image Size, and I'm going to set the width to like 3200. Now, 
Typically, I would not be just straight up downsizing an image this way, uh, but we're doing this just for the tutorial. It's going to keep things flowing along a little bit faster. We're going to be working with an image, as you can see, you know, less than half the size of our initial image here. So it's going to help speed things up. Um, in fact, just because I can, let's go with 4200 for the width to keep our height a little bit closer to 2200. All right, we're going to hit OK to commit that. You're going to see it's going to downsize the image a bit. We just get rid of some of the excess file size, again, just for this tutorial. If this was a client's image, I probably would not be downsizing it like that. I'm going to right-click and convert this to a smart object. Now, one of the things I want to do with this before I go any further is I want to sort of soften the background a little bit. So let's duplicate this layer, Command or Control J, and immediately I'm going to rasterize it. I probably should have duplicated it before I converted it to a smart object. Whatever. You can rasterize it. No big deal. I'm going to name this layer uh, Reduce-Noise. And what we're going to do is convert it to a black and white image by hitting Command Shift. This would be Control Shift on the PC. Command Shift and the letter U. So it would be Control Shift U on the PC. And we're going to go Filter, Noise, Reduce Noise. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click here on his face so I can see the detail of his face. It's going to take a second to load a 100% preview of the effect. Uh, but you can see it's really going to soften up a ton of the details. I just want to do that. It's almost going to give the background a little bit of like a cartoony look, which can sometimes be interesting, especially in these types of composites. Give Photoshop a second. Boom, it applies that. Now, this entire layer is a bit too dark, so I want to bring up my levels real quick, and this is going to be a destructive edit, but I don't mind. I want the bulk of my image to be kind of as close to 50% gray as possible, so I'm going to open up the lights in the image uh, kind of a bit more like that, maybe even bring the brights up a little bit more. That looks like it's about close to 50% gray. And we're going to set this image to a straight up soft light. So it's actually going to infuse some contrast into our background as well, which is going to start wreaking a little bit of havoc uh, up here in the sky. If you're getting a crazy amount of banding, add a little bit of noise to the background layer. In fact, I'm just going to rename this layer background, and I'll throw some noise in just for good measure so you don't feel left out here. 25% way too much, maybe like 8%. Even that's a bit too much, maybe 3%. Let's roll with 3%. Noise is just going to generally help with banding when you get that kind of anywhere in your image. Um, doesn't particularly do an amazing job. We're going to be adding more noise later, so I'm not like super worried about it or anything like that. All right, so now that we have our background kind of set, we could boost the headlight for the car, and maybe I will do that because I think that'll kind of that'll do some interesting things for us later on. Um, so let's just add a new layer here. Let's go new layer. And with the brush tool, I'm going to right-click. I'm going to make my brush quite a bit larger. Again, 1400 is probably great. I want to set my foreground color to white, though. And I'm just going to click once. Bada-bing. Cool. And I'm going to set this to the blend mode of... Let's go linear dodge add. This tends to be a pretty nice sort of highlight effect, especially when you use the fill slider. Um, but it really gets kind of cranked up when you duplicate the layer and you set the lower layer to screen and you kind of work these two layers in conjunction one with the other. So we reduce the opacity of our screen layer, maybe to like 35, and reduce the fill opacity of the linear dodge layer to 50, 60, something like that. It tends to give you like a nice, fairly natural looking... Uh, bright spot, uh, and you can see we everything is a bit too high there, so let's reduce the fill opacity a bit more, and just the straight up opacity a bit more there as well, and we're, we're working with the natural headlight, but you can see how it, I mean, it legitimately makes it look like you're really boosting that headlight, and we can even, if I select both of the layers here and hold down my alter option key, I can duplicate it over to the other headlight, and command or control T maybe, and size this whole thing down a little bit, because it is right next to his pant leg, so it doesn't need to be, you know, like sticking out like crazy. I'm just, you know, scaling, flattening, and making it a little bit more narrow, tipping it over a little bit, and then we would boost the screen a little bit, boost the fill opacity a little bit, and he kind of has a little bit of headlight flare coming out around that pant leg as well. Again, this is where that fill opacity helps uh, with that top layer. We can just select the top layer here, select the bottom layer, hit Command or Control G, we can call this, you know, headlights, I don't know, bump or something because we're, we're bumping the light there in the headlights. And you can name these layers in this group as well. I'm not going to waste your time with that. I'm going to waste your time in plenty of other ways. Let's go ahead now and look at uh, the actual subject for this image. And I've got the subject over here in my Finder. It's the Eden Studio RAW. And by the way, you can download this if you check out the link down in the uh, description. So I'm going to drag this sucker into Photoshop as well. Again, I have all the settings that I want here in Camera Raw already. The image, was the image was actually a little underexposed out of the camera, but we shot Raw, so that's great. We can compensate a little bit. Um, I do have to say, with this particular image, um, the, the, the tip of the barrel of this paintball gun is out of focus. I shot it with a 24-70mm to 70 millimeter lens at 70 millimeters. 
all things being equal, I would probably go back. I would reduce my ISO a bit. I would crank up my studio lights. I would shoot it with probably a 200 millimeter lens, like a 70 to 200 at 200 millimeters. And I would shoot it at like F16 to try to get sharpness through and through. Um, so that, that's probably how I would shoot it again if I, if I could go back and reshoot it. But whatever, this is the image I got. Um, so we're going to work with it. I'm going to go ahead and hit open image. Actually, I should probably open this as a smart object. Hold down shift and choose open object. It's going to open it as a smart object. Separate document. Oh, and you know what? Let's jump back over to the background. I want to do something to this background real quick uh, before we go and really start editing our subject. Let's group all of these layers into one big layer group. So I just select the bottom layer, shift, hold down my shift key, select the top layer, command or control G to group them together. I'm going to call this background, and then I'm going to duplicate this entire uh, layer group by hitting command or control J, and I'm going to right click on this now and choose merge group. So we have everything merged into this background, and I'm going to call this background blurred and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna convert this to a smart object I'm doing this because well I want to blur the background you can see the, the 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 background of the background is naturally blurred out but I want him to be blurred out as well to really make it look like we have some realistic depth of field behind this girl so we're gonna go filter blur gallery and we're gonna choose the field blur now the field bl blur is particularly interesting because you drop these pins where you want blur to be so I'm gonna sort of set up a wall here um, around our guy. I'm gonna set this point to a blur of zero. I'm gonna do the same thing right here, a blur of zero. Same thing here. So I'm just gonna go down along his side because I like the natural bokeh that we're getting out here. I don't really want to change that. And I don't mind down here if this gets a little blurry, that's fine. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drop a point on him right here and I'm gonna increase the blur to like 20, 25, something like that. And what I'm gonna, oh, 20 is actually too much. Let's go like 13. Yeah, that's probably good, 13. All right, let's place another point here. We're gonna try to stay consistent with like a 12 to 13. And then what you're gonna have to do is just go down along the edge of your subject and place little points kind of wherever is needed to keep this blur kind of flowing. Because at this point, all this part of the image, kind of from here to the right, is going to have this nice field blur applied to it, which is gonna sort of naturally make him look like he is behind our girl. All right, so that's great. And if you think that you know something like that is too much, which maybe I'm kind of starting to think, you can select any of these points, and let's just knock it down to like an 8-pixel blur. I'm thinking that might be a little bit uh, more natural looking. And natural is what we want. All right, so 8 pixels, and up here again, 8 pixels. Great. All right, so when you have a blur strength that you like, I think 8 is going to work great. Uh, what, we don't want that. Select that point. Just hit the delete key to get rid of it. And we're going to hit OK to commit this. You can see Photoshop, it's, it's, it still is a huge image, 4,200 pixels wide. But my computer seems to be able to handle it pretty quickly. So we've got this nice, just little blur going on now where it's not like a perfect lens blur, but it is a bit of a blur that's going to knock him out of focus a little bit. There's before, there's after. All right, now we're ready to jump over here and extract her from this background. Now, the background is... It probably should have been lit a little bit differently as well. Again, I wasn't nearly the photographer I am now. I'm still not nearly the photographer I should be, but hey, you get the point. Uh, but the the background color is maybe a little bit too close to her hair color, which makes this semi-challenging to cut her out. But really, I can't complain because there's a ton of straight edges. We are going to employ the brand new-ish, brand new-ish, Select and Mask feature in Photoshop and I have to say, I'm not the biggest fan of Select and Mask. I really like the old way of doing this better. Maybe I'm just not used to this yet. It just seems to be a feature set and tool set that is kind of severely lacking compared to what Photoshop used to be able to do. And maybe I'm still learning how to use it. It just doesn't seem as good to me. But let's go ahead and uh, check out how, uh, how we can make this work for this image. So I'm going to bring in here my, uh, my tablet. And I'm going to select, first and foremost, the, uh, the quick selection tool, which is the top brush. We're kind of going to use the top and second brush, the sort of refined edge brush and the quick selection brush uh, in conjunction with one another. So let's just begin painting over her. You can see I've got the transparency right around 20%. 20% is probably fine. I'm going to set a radius of like three to four pixels for edge detection. We're not doing much with edge detection right now. We're not going to check on smart radius. All right, so we're going to go, and we're just going to start painting. And you're going to see the image is going to sort of come back in the areas where we paint. Uh, Photoshop lags behind a little bit. We got a few large images open, plus I'm recording my screen. Uh, so let's go through here, and we're just going to begin knocking this out. Maybe I should make my brush just a tad bit larger. I can make it larger by just using my uh, square bracket keys right there next to the, my letter P. All right, and paint over here. All right, bring your face back into play here. Bring this hair back in. Great. And basically, the areas that you can see kind of converting back to color, those are the areas that are going to be selected. 
So the idea here in Select and Mask is we're going to create generally a selection that's pretty close, and then we're going to refine it all here within Select and Mask and get just a killer selection and uh, have, a, have a great mask created for us by Photoshop. Doesn't always work out quite as well as, uh, as it should in theory, but hey, we're going to give it a whirl because it's what we've got. All right, there we go. And again, we're going to have to go over this with the brush and clean up some of these edges. It just, it seems to be the nature of the beast with the new selected mask. I, it kind of always was, in fairness to Photoshop. You always kind of had to go over and do some cleanup work, so I shouldn't really say that. But, but it seems particularly be, to be an issue here with selected mask, at least in my, my experience with it lately. So I'm just painting over here. I don't really care if I get a little bit of the background. I'm going to go in again and clean this stuff up. You can always hold down your Alt or Option key and paint away anything that you add that you don't want. Uh, this area of the image is going to be a little tricky because I feel like Photoshop, the arm is kind of similar in color to the background. So Photoshop may try to grab the whole thing. Now it actually worked out pretty well. Now I'm going to hold down Alt or Option try to paint away a couple of these little uh, nubs sticking out here off of her jacket. Make my brush a little smaller. Try to go up into here. Again, see how it got rid of part of the magazine? I don't like that. I'm going to just Command or Control Z to undo that. Let me just try clicking in there once more. All right, we got rid of some of it. That's okay. And let's see if we can bring back some of this bracelet. And again, if I get a little bit of the background, that's fine. We're going to go over it with the Refine Edge tool in just a second. I'm just looking over my edges. I almost would rather have a little bit extra than not have enough. Uh, because again, like I said, we're going to go over it with the Refine Edge. And Refine Edge is going to kind of help you know, get rid of some of that extra stuff as well. All right, so let's go ahead and grab the Refine Edge brush. Give Photoshop a second. It's going to kind of do its thing out here. All right, Refine Edge brush. Now we have our edge detection over here set to a radius of four pixels. So Photoshop is going to kind of look sort of for four pixels on, on any side of our uh, of where we're painting, of the kind of for the edge of our selection. I'm going to right click here and reduce the softness of this brush a little bit, maybe down to like 70% or so. And I'm going to begin painting over this edge of her hair. And I'm just going to watch very carefully. So just give it a second here. Photoshop's going to catch up to me actually painting. It, well, it should any second at least. If you're not seeing any change, try just boosting that edge radius a little bit more. There we go. Six, seven, five, six, seven. Makes all the difference in the world. Let's keep painting over the edge here. And just be careful. You're going to kind of get a live preview of what uh, Photoshop's doing uh, to the edge. So I'm, I'm just going to paint over areas that I kind of know need to be cleaned up. And like I can tell right there, the brush took way too much out of her hair. So I'm going to hold down my Alter Option key, and I'm going to kind of revert the edge, uh, the, the refined edge brush. And I'm going to try to paint a little bit further outside than that and just really touch the edges and not get so much of her hair. I'm not even going to touch that part of her jacket down there. I'm going to try here by the bracelet, see what that does. Eh, it's not bad. It's okay. And I'm not even going to try to do it up here around the barrel of the uh, the rifle, the paintball gun. Uh, that just that that just looks like it's a, a travesty, a train wreck waiting to happen. All right, we will just go ahead and smooth this a little bit. Uh, I don't mind that. I'm going to increase the contrast of the edge a little bit. It's going to give the edge a little bit more bite. Um, and then also we're going to shift the edge inward just a little bit. So like negative 10, negative 11. I, I don't know. To me, it helps create a little bit of a cleaner edge. We're going to go ahead now and hit OK. And what a selected mask is going to do is output a new layer with a mask. Um, and you can see we have that new layer with the mask. But you can also see that the edges leave you know, kind of a bit to be desired. We got to clean up the bracelet here, all around the rifle. We got to clean up with the brush. We got to bring back some of the hair. I mean, there's straight up a hole through her head right there. Uh, over here, the hair is very light. The edge is not very clean. I don't know. To me, I'm not a huge, huge fan of this tool right now. Maybe Photoshop will make it better. Uh, or maybe I'll actually learn how to use it if I'm not using it the right way. Uh, so let's clean up these edges. So to make these edges a little bit easier to clean up and, in fact, give them even more contrast than they need, we're just going to throw a layer beneath this layer. I'm going to hold down my Commander Control key and just select New Layer, the New Layer icon. And then we can just fill this with, you know, either white or black. Pick your choice. Black's my foreground color here. So I'm going to hit Alt or Option. Uh, so this would be Option Delete on the Mac, Alt Backspace on the PC. And you can see when we do this, we got some edge work to do here. Her hair is a little bit of a mess, uh, and, and the edges need to be cleaned up. This is where it's really particularly helpful to have a tablet. I'm using my Wacom tablet here. Um, but if you don't, you should generally be able to follow along just with a mouse as well. Uh, a tablet just tends to be a lot faster. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab the brush tool. I'm going to right click. We're going to uh, give it reasonable hardness, you know, eight, 75 to 80, maybe even like 80, 85% and reduce the size quite a bit You knock it down around 50, maybe something like so. And I'm going to select the mask for her. So I, I'm working up on the mask on her layer. I'm painting. My foreground color is black. So I'm just going to go paint over the edge here. Hold down my shift key and click to go straight up. 
just maintain kind of a nice straight edge along the jacket there. That's good. You can see there her jacket's missing a little piece. Flip your foreground color to white by hitting the letter X. And we can just paint that right back in just like that. Looks like her skin's missing a little something something right there. Great. You can see this, the, the bracelet really did kind of get mangled. So we're going to paint this whole edge back in. And you can see this is where, like, the Select the Mask to me is kind of disappointing because, like, I wish this were done. I wish this was finished for me. What's going on? What did I just do? Oh, I put my caps lock key on, which brought me into precise painting mode. That's my mistake. Let's paint that away. Do, do, do. You can see you can go over. and You can do this in as much detail as you want. Maybe I'll speed this up here. All right, great. So you can see here, I want to set my foreground color back to white. Make sure that I'm still using a relatively hard-edged brush. I just want to just dab in just to... If for nothing else, just give the edge a little bit more strength, right? You can see it looks like she's missing part of her finger there, right? Just completely cut off by the select and mask or whatever the feature is called. I almost don't even care to learn the name of it. All right, let's make our brush a little smaller. By the way, I'm just using my bracket keys to make my brush a little smaller. All right, we might have to touch that up. You know what? I'm actually going to make my brush a little bit bigger. We need to reduce the hardness a little bit here. And I just want to go along there and just soften that edge. All right, we can come into here, paint away as much of this as we can. Now, one of the things that we can do here with the end of the barrel of the rifle to ensure that we get a nice round edge for the barrel of the rifle is, number one, we can go in and just cut out the little holes here in the flash suppressor. All right, so we can make those holes, make them as uniform as possible. And then what I like to do to get kind of the barrel or the, the end of the barrel just like it should be, is I'll drag out, I'll use the, uh, the elliptical marquee tool here, and I'll just drag around where I believe the end of the barrel is. I actually think some of the barrel's been cut off. So maybe something like that, right? And then what I'll do is, with my brush tool, I'm going to flip my foreground color to white, and I'm just going to paint with white all around here. So basically, this is going to give us a nice uniform edge all the way around uh, the end of the barrel. And it actually looks like it's not quite where the end of the barrel is, so I'm going to just nudge with my arrow keys, bring that over a little bit, something like that, and then I'm going to inverse my selection, Command Shift or Control Shift I. I'm going to paint with black now because I want to get rid of the stuff outside of my selection here. Cool. All right, let's deselect that. So we get a nice round edge on the end of the barrel. And the top of the barrel could use a little love as well. Just dust that off a little bit. We're going to go over this a little bit more perfectly a little bit later when we kind of help blend this into the image itself. Uh, we'll go up the side of the battle site here on the front of the rifle. All right, we're going to try bringing this back a little bit. Yeah, this is kind of the hopper that feeds the paintballs into uh, the marker. There we go. Great. We'll move up there. All right, I'm going to paint her hair back here. You can see how much of her hair just straight got cut out. We don't want to go too close to the edge, however, because Select and Mask uh, is giving us some good, like, edge frizzy hair opaqueness, which is going to allow our hair to blend nicely with the background. And I also want to just paint here along the front side of this, the handle, because she has hair that runs down along there as well. And in order to paint a perfectly straight line, just hold down your Shift key. And, you know, click once where you want the line to start and click at the end of the line and Photoshop will do the rest. Uh, that line's a little bit too perfect, so I'm just going to kind of hand paint along it. Just paint away some of the gray that appeared. It's probably good enough. That's actually part of the handle, even though it looks like it's, uh, even though it looks like it's not. Whoop, let me undo that. I moved the whole mask. All right, let's go ahead and make the brush a little bit larger. I'm going to paint again with white. We want to bring hair back. Bring hair back that's up here. Um, I'm going to right-click, make my brush a bit softer as well to kind of blend everything out a little. Um, and we want to be careful out here. We don't want to get too crazy close to the edge because, like I said, Select and Mask, even though it looks funky over the black, let's just wait to see how it blends with our background image. I have a feeling it will blend pretty nicely. I am, however, going to get rid of any little wumpty dumps that kind of appear out here on the side of her head. All right, so kind of... That sort of stuff needs to be pushed back. But again, maybe we'll look at this and realize we shouldn't have done that when we see it with the background image. This kind of thing I know needs to be pushed back because that, that'll definitely look out of place. We'll just kind of smooth that together. This is a little bit easier because it's kind of a long, straight drag in her hair. So that'll this will probably mask in pretty nicely. Down here you can see Select and Mask did all kinds of, just all kinds of craziness. I don't even know what's going on. We're missing a lot of hair. 
it's just very thin. And remember, we we kind of only we only masked the edge here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be gentle with this, bringing some of this back. But I don't want I don't want to fade it back out to the color down here on the jacket. That's all right. I'm gonna try to get rid of some of that. All right, let's zoom let's zoom this back out. Um, I move the whole layer beneath the black layer, hence the reason it looks like it disappeared. And maybe what I'll do is just for continuity's sake, there's this one really bright hair sticking out, which could be kind of distracting. So I'm going to cover that up. All right, kind of like so. There we go, something like that. Although I wouldn't want to get rid of all little flyaways because if those uh, kind of translate nicely to the other image, it's really going to make the image look pretty realistic. All right, let's drag this over. Let's see how it looks on our new background. It's probably going to be way too big, but I want to just take a quick gander at the hair, uh, the edges of the hair. They actually came out pretty nicely. Uh, edge of the barrel of the gun needs to be touched up a little bit. We can take care of that in a second. Uh, some of the hair up here, see that? That kind of needs to be, well, maybe we can position her so it's cut off at the top. That is kind of cheaping out of it. Uh, but that really does need to be adjusted a little bit. We'll take a look at that. Uh, in fact, let's work on that right now. Let's just zoom in. Uh, and maybe a little trick for this is just select the mask, grab your brush tool, set your brush tool to the blend mode of soft light, paint with black because we're painting over we're painting over the black part of the image. And if you have your brush set to soft light, we make it nice and big, it's not really going to get rid of white stuff. It's just going to kind of intensify the black stuff. You see that? I, I, by the way, I alt or option click to the mask. And you can see when I do that, see how it's just kind of painting away some of that darker stuff, almost exposing the edges of the hair a little bit more. It's kind of cool. Here we can paint that away and not really lose, uh, not really lose crazy edge fidelity of our hair. All right, I'm going to zoom back out, check it out. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Still not perfect, but I mean, at some point you're just going to start sort of flattening the side of her head, so you do want to be careful as well. All right, that's going to be good. Let's select the layer. Let's uh, drag it around. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this layer now, and we're going to choose Convert to Smart Object. So what that's going to do is it's going to package the mask inside of our actual layer. Just give it a second because, again, it's a huge image we're dragging over. Um, in fact, what I can do is I can just close this image now just to help the computer run along a little faster. We're going to transform this image. Command or Control T because we're going to get it into position here. In fact, I know I want the barrel of the rifle right about there. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to drag my central point right to there. So we're going to kind of size the entire image based on the edge of the rifle being right there. I'm going to hold down Shift and Alt. This will be Shift and Option on the Mac. And I'm going to scale her down, scale her down. Kind of. Kind of like that. Maybe, maybe a touch smaller. I don't know. I feel like she needs to be just a touch wider. There we go, something like that. Go ahead, enter a return to commit that. Because it's a smart object, we can come back and we can play with it later. One of the things I can do, though, is I can go in with a mask now on the smart object, and I can further clean up any edges that appear distracting. So we always have that option uh, now that we've converted this to a smart object. But I suppose one of the first things that uh, we should do before we mess around with the edges here is just zoom in and let's get rid of this X1 Phenom or whatever it says here on the side of the, uh, the rifle, which... Uh, definitely would be a dead giveaway that this is a paintball gun. I just created a new layer here, so hit the new layer icon, and we're going to call this uh, cover-up. Should be self-explanatory, right? And what we'll do is I think I'm just going to brush over this and add noise. So if we grab the brush tool, we're going to set the mode back to normal, and I need to have a fairly small brush, uh, even smaller than that, something like that, great. Uh, and I'm going to just sample from the color that's here. So I'm going to sample from this brown... And I'm going to paint, 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 paint. Don't worry if it's not looking super realistic yet. It's going to get there. And we're going to clean this thing up pretty nicely in just a second. Blur this thing together. Well, not blur it together yet. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm speaking out loud. All right, there we go. So we've got kind of those colors. We'll blur this whole thing a little bit. Uh, we're going to take this light gray out here. And we're going to take this and just cover, 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 cover. Cover all of that up. And we can make it as clean or the, the, the edges as clean or not clean as we want. Uh, we're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And the key is we don't want to blur it very much. Maybe like one and a half, one and a half, two, something like that. Okay. And now in order to really make it blend in, we need to go filter, noise, add noise. And we're going to look to basically add noise to the point where it kind of matches the pixels around it. Three is actually pretty close. Five is... Five is probably a little bit too much, but I kind of dig the extra noise. Because what we can do is, all right, so we can go like six, which we know is definitely too much, and immediately come up to uh, edit, excuse me, fade, add noise, and fade, add noise, excuse me, and we can just shift this back until it kind of blends nicely with the rest of the rifle around it. We can zoom back out. 
and you can see it blends in pretty nicely. The one thing maybe that I would do is just desaturate the layer because it looks like there's almost like a little bit of maroon in there. So image adjustments, desaturate. You can see that. Oop, and see that desaturate actually did too much. So we would go edit, fade, desaturate even. And let's just scale back the amount of desaturation to kind of blend that perfectly. Hit OK. Zoom back out. All right, great. We've covered the logo up. You know, it's just nice, nicely covered there. Now, what we want to do is we want to clip this cover-up layer to uh, to our subjects. We're going to hit Command Option. This would be Control Alt and the letter G on the PC, and we're going to begin adding some different color effects to her to start kind of blending her into this scene, helping her assume the color of the scene. I'm looking here. You can still see a little bit of like haloing here from the. Uh, from the bracelet. So let's just add a mask. Really, we should go back into the smart object. You know what? Let's do that. Double click on the smart object, go back into the smart object, and we're going to go on to the mask here. Let's add a layer beneath. Command or Control click to add a layer. We're going to fill it. You can fill it with any color you want, just something so we can see what's going on. And then down here, we got a little, it's very, very slight. In fact, maybe we should alter option, click on the mask. Yep. See all that? All that is just showing through on our image. So make sure our foreground color is set to black. Make our brush a little bit larger. We're just going to paint all that right away. Great. Alter option, click on the mask. We want to delete that background layer. All right. We need to save our smart object. You can see it's opened this .psb file. Commander Control S to save the smart object. Commander Control W to close it once the saving is finished. Let's give it a second. Tickety tickety tock. All right. Command or Control W to close it. And you can see there we go. It's nice and clean now in our image. By the way, if you want to do any retouching to her, any retouching of the eyes, get rid of some of the little acne-ish uh, stuff, any of the freckles, you can always do that. We're not really going to cover that in this tutorial. This is going to be all about cutting her out, getting her into the scene, getting the hair right, getting the edges right, and getting the color right. Uh, any retouching that you want to do, you can, of course, do. Uh, first things first, I want to get rid of the halo here over on the end of the barrel of uh, the rifle. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to load her as a... Oh, actually, we're going to add a mask to that to, to her layer first. I'm going to get a Commander Control to load her as a selection. Commander Control click on the layer thumbnail. I'm going to zoom in over here. All right, that's not too bad. And I'm going to go select, modify, contract. And I'm going to contract by, yeah, something like three pixels, not very much at all. And then, and very important here, I'm going to go modify feather. And I'm also going to feather by, yeah, one, two, three pixels. Let's go two just because it's right there in the middle. And then what we need to do is we need to inverse our selection. So right now, you can see only she is selected. I actually want to select everything else because that means I'm going to select this very tiny little bit of haloed edge on the outside of the barrel and kind of foregrip of this rifle. So I'm going to hit Command, uh, Command Shift I. That'd be Control Shift I on the PC. All right. And then I'm going to take my brush tool, very soft edge brush, maybe a semi large brush, painting with the color black. And I'm just going to begin painting over these edges. It's going to clear away that little bit of halo y stuff. And I only want to do it here on the, the fore part of the rifle. I don't want to, you know, get down on her hands or anything down here. I don't mind that stuff. I really want that rifle to blend. Look at how much nicer that blends. That was before, that's after. So just a nice, soft, edged uh, cleanup job. All right, so now that we've done that, we've cleaned that up. If there's any other areas of haloing, maybe around the magazine that you're getting, uh, feel free to go in and clean them up. Maybe if this hair up here is distracting, you, you can zap some of that. Painting with black, we can just paint away, you know, clean away a couple of those strands and things like that. Literally anything that is going to be distracting and taking away from the final image, just go ahead and, and get rid of it. So I'll just clean up this edge a little bit. I'm just using this, you know, medium sized soft edge brush. Again, that kind of soft edge might be a little distracting, you know. Uh, it does actually kind of look not the greatest. So here's what we're going to do we're going to load her as a selection again. We're going to do that same trick, modify, contract. Yeah, I'll go like three pixels again. We'll flip it, and I'm going to soften it again. Select, modify, feather. We're going to do just a few pixels. Uh, you know, actually, I'm going to go like four pixels this time. I'm going to do a little more, and I'm going to paint black along this edge. See if that just helps kind of clean up some of that halo-y. I would almost rather go directly from her hair right to where the, presumably this the, the light from this car headlight is going to be hitting her hair. Commander Control D to deselect. That looks a little bit better, I think. Yeah, you can see how it takes away some of that old background color. That's great. All right, so now that we've done all that, we're ready to go ahead and kind of help match her color to the scene that we're placing her in. We're going to do this first with a color balance adjustment layer. Color balance adjustment layer can be found layer, new adjustment layer, color balance, and you can name it whatever you like. Okay, and we want to clip it to the layer beneath. So that's that command option G, control alt G on the PC, right? Great. And we're going to begin with shadows here, and it looks like she doesn't have enough blue in her, so we're going to increase the blue a little bit. Blue in the shadows can be kind of dangerous, so just be careful with it. 
uh, cyan maybe in the... Sh oh, whoops, we're still on the blue slider. What am I doing? She select the red cyan. Maybe some cyan into uh, the the uh, shadows. I'm thinking actually just a, like a drip of green into the shadows. Let's go to midtones now. Let's bring some blues into the midtones as well. Some cyan into the midtones. Ooh, maybe a little bit too much cyan. A little purple, just a touch, smidge of purple. Let's go highlights. With highlights, we definitely want blue because you can see in his skin, he definitely kind of has like some blue wash to his skin. All right, some cyan up there as well. Maybe a little bit of magenta. All right, looks like we're probably going to have to back off this effect overall so we can just reduce the opacity of this layer a little bit. All right, you can see there's before, there's after. We're starting to bring her in a little bit. She's still too bright. We're going to darken her up a little bit in just a second. Uh, all right, so we got that first bit there. Uh, we're going to go with a curves adjustment layer. Again, use that same command option G, Control Alt G, Hotkey to clip to the layers beneath. And we're going to reduce contrast. So I'm going to just boost the black point a little bit and reduce the white point a little bit. And uh, let's continue adding a little bit of blue. You want to add blue? You want to add blue to the highlights, but maybe not necessarily so much blue to the shadows. So I'm going to drag that point down a little bit down there. Uh, maybe we need to add a little bit of red now. Still needs a little cyan. It's very distracting how bright her forearm here is. Uh, let's go to the green as well. I don't want to do too much over here. Too much magenta is really going to make our image look kind of funky. All right, there we go. So there's before curves. There's after curves. Very slight adjustment. Maybe we should kill off a little bit more contrast with this. You'll see why we're killing off contrast in a little bit. Just an overall darkening. We're going to be pumping some contrast back in here. Uh, and I think we should also reduce vibrance. So add a vibrance adjustment uh, a vibrance adjustment layer as well. That command, option G, control, alt, G trick again. And just reduce the overall vibrance. Uh, we're, we're, these adjustment layers are only targeting her when we're clipping like this. So there's before, there's after. So that's pretty good. There's definitely too much. She's got too much blue in her. So let's down that a little bit. We need to bring some vibrance back into here. This is kind of like we're doing this like dance. This dance with the colors of the image a little bit here. All right, so we shut all of that off. There's the image before. There's the image now. It's coming a little bit closer. It's still a bit too bright. So let's go ahead and add uh, a couple uh, mask, uh, mask, mask. Let's go ahead and add a couple curves adjustment layers with masks. That's what I meant to say. Uh, so let's start with a single curves adjustment layer. Bring the highlights way down. Uh, remember, we're, I'm mainly focusing on her. I'm going to bring her highlights down. I'm going to pull kind of like a little S curve almost into that flattened curve. Great. Something right about there. That definitely darkens her up a lot. But what we need to do is actually just mask it to her. So I'm going to select the mask, and I'm going to hit Command or Control I. That's going to flip and fill my mask with black. I'm going to load her as a as a selection. So I'm going to Command or Control click on her. Now remember, we did adjust the edges a little bit, so there's going to be kind of some haloing that will happen if we do some too many extreme changes because this mask is what's clipping away those edges. So with this selected, we're going to grab our brush tool. We want a pretty huge brush here. Uh, maybe even bigger than this. I'm just using my bracket keys. And I'm going to paint with white. And I'm going to start painting in the foreground here. Kind of this, you know, for the, the, the right side of her face, if you will. That's the area that I want to be uh, darker. All right, now I'm going to paint with black. I'm going to kind of fade the two areas together a little bit more. Something kind of like that. All right, let's uh, hit Command or Control D to deselect. And let's duplicate this adjustment layer, Command or Control J. You can see that's just, I mean, that's stinking way too much. So let's reduce the opacity quite, quite a, quite a, quite a bit. You know what there is? There's too much magenta. There's too much magenta in there. I'm going to paint with black here and just bring out some of these areas need to be brought out a little bit more. All right, so we're just kind of hiding that effect. So this is a very selective little bit of, uh, of curves darkening. All right, so there's before, there's after. Um, she's got too much magenta in her. Let's go back to the original um, the color balance layer here and just pump a little bit of green into there. There we go. That kind of helps balance things out. It's so tricky, guys, going in and doing this. So tricky. In fact, one of the things you can do is you can grab your background layer. Let's just hold down Alt or Option, duplicate the background layer up to the top. Something like... Something like that. If it, There we go. Right click and choose to rasterize the layer. And you can just select all on this layer. Command or Control A. Go filter, blur, average. And it's going to give you an average color of your scene, which you can see essentially is gray. Uh, but if I hit Command or Control U and boost the saturation a little bit, uh, if it's not totally gray, which it looks like it's just really actually gray, um, 
maybe what we'll want to do instead since there's just so much gray. What average does it just basically takes the average of all the pixels and gives you that color. We could maybe sample the color from the sky, fill this layer with that. That's Alt Backspace or Option Delete on the Mac. Uh, clip this to the layers beneath. Command Option G, Control Alt G on the PC. All right, so we're clipping. Oh, whoops, wrong, wrong, wrong layer that we're clipping to. We want to clip to this down here. All right, so it's clipped to her. And you can set this to something like, you know, you can try color. All right, see how like blue she is, and then just really reduce the opacity. Again, you're just looking to influence things. Now she looks way too green. So we'll come into curves here. Let's take a look at this. It can just be tricky, and, and your eyes play tricks on you because they, they kind of adjust to one thing, and they start telling you, oh, no, no, that looks great. That looks so good. Maybe just having that really is kind of messing with me up there. I'm going to delete that layer altogether. That's that's something you can try. I've already started with all of this, so I'm going to keep playing with these layers. And you just go back and forth. You keep playing with it until you look at it and you say, ah, yes, we got it. All right, so maybe actually if we pump more blue into it. And remember, we're doing this with that vibrance adjustment layer really taking some life out of our colors. That actually looks kind of nice. Let's go up to the highlights here. Let's go blue in the highlights a little bit more. Maybe the vibrance adjustment layer is taking a little bit too much vibrance out of it for us. There we go, something like that, cool. Also, what could be an issue is the white point shouldn't be so low. We can boost the white point up and just darken everything else, right, like that. That can sometimes give you a more natural darkening there in the foreground, right, something like that. All right, cool, we're not going to fuss with it too much. Uh, there is that really bad haloing uh, going on there, so we can just zoom in. And again, whoop, hello. What we can do here is just select this, and we can paint it by hand. We could load a selection using the mask that we've already created. I'm not going to go over all of that uh, complicated mess right now, though. Let's just go in here kind of by hand. And again, the one thing you want to be careful of is you just, you just really don't want it to look like there's a halo on this edge, you know, all over again. There we go. Something like that looks good. All right, let's zoom back out. So we just clean up that edge a little bit. All right, and, you know, when you're playing around with the color, you're just going to be messing around with the playing with it. And we're going to continue doing some color adjustments here. So hang with me. I know it, it takes a little bit of time. In fact, one of the things that we'll do is add a gradient map adjustment layer. And we can choose some kind of new colorization. So maybe I'll go with like this, you know, kind of electric -y blue or purple, whatever color that is, to almost this like beach Baja green, right? You can see how crazy that looks. And go set the blend mode to like soft light. What this begins to do is just give you a general overall global lighting adjustment and help tie your foreground image to your background image. Now, it looks like the rifle and her maybe are both a, just a bit too bright. Um, in fact, maybe to correct that, we'll just go into the smart object. So I'll double click the smart object. And if you remember in the smart object, we have her. We could apply an adjustment layer in here. Um, will I do that? Yeah, I think I will do that. I'll do that in here. I'll just apply a curves adjustment layer and I'll darken her overall in here. Something like that. I'm just look, watching the shadows in her face, all right? And I'm doing this just so I apply it kind of beneath that mask so we don't go through some of what we just went through. All right, let's Command or Control S to save this PSB file. And, of course, Command or Control W just to close that PSB. And you can see she's quite a bit darker. In fact, we can get rid of maybe one of these curves adjustment layers and reduce the opacity of the other one. I was really mainly looking to darken up the, the rifle in the front. There we go. That's actually kind of cool. So I just reduced that top curves adjustment layer to like 60%, 65%. You know, again, you're just dancing with it at this point. Reduce the opacity maybe of the gradient uh, map uh, over uh, gradient map overlay adjustment layer here. And that's going to, you know, again, we're looking to tie our foreground subject to the background of the image. And these colors are going to kind of help pull it together and, as you can see, infuse with some contrast as well. So one of the things that I think we can do to add a little bit more realism is start to create a little flare that's going to kind of tie our images together. So I'm going to name this layer Bokey Lights or something like that. I just created a new layer there. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to create uh, a couple sort of like lens flare-ish little shapes that would be coming out of these two uh, bits of bokeh around the rifle if those uh, if those lights were bright enough. So I'm going to make my brush tool a little bit larger, maybe something like that. Hold down my Alt or Option key, sample that yellow color, paint once right there to dab a little bit of that color, and then grab some of this kind of tealish color, dab right there to, to add that. Hit uh, Command or Control J to duplicate this. We're going to set the bottom layer to the blend mode of screen, kind of like we did for the car headlight, right? Top layer to linear dodge, add, reduce the fill of the top layer, reduce the opacity of uh, the bottom layer. We'll zoom back out a little bit. In all likelihood, uh, we're, whoop, hello, 
Let's, uh, let's go ahead and reduce the opacity a little bit. In all likelihood here, we're going to have to group these layers together and mask them a little bit just to help kind of blend them together a little bit. So let's just shift click, command or control G. Uh, we'll name this bokeh lights again so we don't lose track of anything. If I can use my keyboard, there we go. <laughs> add, a, uh, add a layer mask. Again, we can just use a nice big soft edge brush and just dab with the color black a couple times. Just kind of clean things up a touch. So we just have kind of this light that's interacting with the barrel of the rifle. Just, you know, those little subtle bits of added realism can really help push your image uh, over the top. All right, now one of the other things that we're going to do is we're going to add a curves adjustment layer on top of all of this, and we're going to reduce contrast again. So I'm going to pull up on the blacks, pull down on the whites, kind of something like that. I'll brighten the image overall. And then I'm going to add a channel mixer. This is going to help add some of that cinematic color. Tick on monochrome. It's one of my favorite ways to do this. And I'm going to pull up on the blue channel here because I know there's a lot of blues in this image, right? A lot of kind of blues and purples. So we'll pull up on the blues like that. We're blowing out some highlights. I don't really care about that too much right here. We're going to set this to a blend mode of multiply. You can see it's going to give us this super dark, gritty, rich effect. We're going to pull back on the opacity, um, you know, a reasonable amount. All right, so there's before, there's after. You can see how much that, uh, that multiply channel mixer does. It just really flattens and gives you these really cool tones. I absolutely love it. Uh, and lastly, we just need to add some sharpening and some grain. So I'm just going to add a quick layer of high pass sharpening by merging all the layers together. Command Shift Alt E. This would be Command Shift Option E on the Mac. I'll name this layer High Pass. And we're going to convert it to black and white. Command Shift or Control Shift U. Black and white. Great. Filter Other High Pass. And uh, two is usually going to be good. You want to be careful going too high because you'll get a lot of like extraneous uh, haloing around the edges of your subjects in your photo or really anything with detail. So be careful with that. I'm going to set it to the blend mode of overlay and I'm going to zoom into 100%. You should always work with sharpening at 100% if possible. Reduce the opacity of it a touch. There we go. And then last but not least, we want to add grain because grain is sort of like a retoucher's best friend at the end of a project. It helps blend all of your colors and tones even more. And like we talked about at the beginning of the tutorial, it helps uh, it helps sort of get rid of banding or image degradation. So we're going to create a new layer, and I'm going to name it Grain. This is going to be pretty quick here. We're going to go Edit, Fill. We're going to fill it with 50% gray. Make sure our foreground color and background color are black and white by hitting the letter D. Go Filter, Noise, Add Noise. We're going to add about 25% for an image this size. You want it to be uniform, and most importantly, you want it to be monochromatic. We don't want to introduce any color. All right, let's zoom in a little bit here. Uh, now what we can do is set this layer to the blend mode of soft light. Whoop, I went hard light. We want soft light. You can see way too much grain. Don't worry about that yet. We're going to take care of that in just a second. Hit Command or Control J once more. We're doubling up the grain effect because we want to make this grain look more natural and maybe a little, a little bit softer. So hit Command or Control T to free transform this grain. Right click, choose flip horizontal. And then up here in the toolbar up here, we want to go negative 350. Uh, whoop, let's try that again. Let's go negative 350 and negative 350. And that's, so basically we are expanding the size of our grain by 350%. It was just negative because I flipped it horizontal. And then what I want to do is hit Command or Control A and duplicate this up to a new layer. Command or Control J to duplicate to a new layer. And I'm going to delete this layer of grain because it's a massive layer. It's, remember, it's going to be you know three times the size of our image. So it's all kinds of extra grain that we don't need. And I'm going to call this grain 350 because it's 350% the size. And now we begin the process of just really reducing the opacity of the grain a lot. So I'm going to take this down, I mean, literally to like 8, 9, 10% really, really low. And then the, the smaller, more fine grain, I'm going to reduce that to an opacity of, I don't know, 50, 60, something like that. Just look at the image, look to see what looks good, what kind of helps blend everything and pull everything together. So there we go. We finally completed the image. And you can see just like that, We've brought the image into Photoshop. We've edited a background and a foreground. We've cut it out using the new, still somewhat wonky, Select and Mask a tool set in Photoshop. But we've created this pretty cool little composite in Photoshop, and relatively quickly. Remember, we went through this, you know, in the, in the amount of time that we did. I don't know how long it's taken to record this. But that was with me explaining it to you. So if you go and do this on your own, it's going to be even faster. And the more you practice it and get good at it, you'll be even faster and faster and faster. So for creating composite images in Photoshop and this kind of epic, gritty, cinematic, think HBO style composite image, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and I'll catch you in the next one.